about their own needs are the accommodators. Accommodators really will give you anything you want in a conflict situation. They will not really take care of their own personal needs. They're real easy to deal with in a conflict because you just say, come on, this is what I need. And the accommodator goes, okay. Okay. Over here, no concern for their own needs and very little concern for anyone else's are the avoiders. And those of you who have been to managing interpersonal relationships, this is not a backup style. This is a very legitimate way of dealing with conflict. Okay? It's not a defensive posture. And right smack dab in the middle, compromise. Different from collaboration in that everybody gives up a little bit to come to a solution. Everybody compromises a little. In collaboration, nobody gives up anything. Everybody gets what they want. Does that make sense? Now, what does that profile mean? Well, a couple of things. First of all, the highest peak in your profile, under whatever style that is, is the way you prefer to deal with conflict most frequently. It's the way that you will automatically, knee-jerk, gut-level reaction, deal with a conflict situation. And you'll be right a lot of the times. The second highest peak on your chart is what we refer to as a backup. Say maybe your first style of dealing with conflict is accommodation. And you find yourself in a conflict situation, suddenly your, your uh, co-worker is telling you that they really need some, some, some uh, resources from you, some money and, and actually some floor space. Accommodators will try and say, fine, you just take it. But if they can't get away with it, then they'll go to their next backup style. If it's something like competitive, then all of a sudden it becomes all-out battle. So you'll use your backup style when your primary preferred style won't work. So what does all that mean? Well, I, let me back up a little bit. Pe avoidance is a very, very excellent way of dealing with conflict. If you're in a particularly emotionally heated meeting, I mean, where people are suddenly getting a little bit out of control, or getting red in the face, and starting to say things that are hurtful. Calling a halt to that, avoiding it, taking a time out till the afternoon or something, is the best response you can make. And using avoidance in that situation is excellent. On the other hand, if it's a critical issue, and it's something you just don't want to deal with, and you avoid to the point that nobody can get a hold of you, nobody can deal with you, it's not a very appropriate way to deal with conflict. What we firmly believe is that if you can, find a way to always try collaboration first. It's at least approaching with a mindset that there is a possible solution for all of us. Now, if collaboration isn't your preferred style, then maybe you've got a little work to do. Maybe not. If you try collaboration and it doesn't work, then you may try compromise or you may try any of these others. But what I guess I want to say is that the situation is going to determine which style to use, not your own preference. Competitive is very appropriate if you're dealing with somebody else who approaches you in a competitive way. You have to take a competitive stance to show them that you're going to fight, that you're willing to play. As soon as you can get them to back off, then you want to try collaboration again, okay? But what we've tried to give you is some kind of examples of behavior that you might want to look at if especially you're bringing up this behavior. If any of you had your high peak above the line that says 75th percent, 75th percentile, I will guarantee you that using that style a lot of times when it's completely ineffective. You're relying on it too much. Yeah that you walk into any situation, almost, and use that style. If you've got a peak at the bottom that's under the 25th percentile, you're probably not using that at all, and there are a lot of situations where it would be a very nice thing to have in your repertoire of behavior. The whole point of this little exercise is the more behaviors we have available to us in dealing with conflict, 
the easier it is going to be for us to get that conflict resolution we're looking for. But if we're stuck with one and we use it mindlessly over and over and over again, we're going to be less effective in taking care of that.